Good afternoon. It's Jeffrey Christian of CPM Group. It's about 3.20 in the afternoon on Friday, the 14th of June. Gold is trading around $2,346. Uh, it's been pretty volatile today, about a $40 or $50 range. Silver is uh, $29.26 uh, as we speak, uh, having tested and broken below $29 earlier in the day, also with a wide band. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on. We have stated repeatedly that our thoughts are that longer term, by the end of the year, gold and silver prices will probably resume their upward trend. Um, but that in the shorter term, June, July, August, you could see prices move sideways to somewhat lower. In our very short term, term uh, trade recommendations, we have been saying for the last several weeks, stand aside if you're a short-term trader, unless you really are good at, at short-term trading, and very few people are, even if they don't realize they're not. Um, unless you're really facile at trading, these are treacherous markets. We've seen very volatile prices moving upward and downward. There's gold prices, and you can see, moved up very strongly in March and April. And since the middle of April, they've been trading between uh, $2,300 and 2440 dollars So big moves every day, $40, $50, $80. And those moves reflect uncertainty on the part of financial market participants. There's a great deal of uncertainty right now as to what the future Brings. We've seen relatively strong economic activity. GDP is slowing. Employment is continuing to grow, although you're also seeing a small rise in unemployment. Unemployment at 4% um, is still far below previous levels, um, and it's in pretty good shape. But you're starting to see pockets of weakness uh, emerging in the U.S. economy and stronger signs of weakness in Europe and Japan, as if the industrialized worlds are slouching toward a recession. Not imminent, but on the horizon. And in that environment, financial markets are trying to guess what comes next in terms of demand, economic activity, demand for goods and services provided by corporations. Do I buy the stocks? Do I sell the stocks? Stocks are at record levels. Should I be taking profits? Um, this tremendous amount of uncertainty and a lot of uncertainty about what interest rate patterns will be. Certain uh, uh, central banks, the ECB, Bank of Canada, have lowered interest rates a quarter of a point uh, over the last uh, few weeks. The FOMC and Federal Reserve Board have kept interest rates stable at five and a quarter, five and a half, and have indicated they probably will. Uh, and that leaves people who try to guess what comes next in terms of interest rates and economic activity in financial markets, trying to guess what comes next in a vacuum of concrete information. Fed has been pretty explicit, and in its uh, policy uh, FOMC statement yesterday, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit, um, has made it very clear that it doesn't see any call for lowering interest rates at present. And it also doesn't necessarily see any imminent evidence that it should be increasing interest rates further. It's waiting to see how the economy unfolds too. And as I've said many times, and it still is true, um, you shouldn't be hoping for lower interest rates. The Fed will lower interest rates when it's worried about the U.S. tipping into or sliding into or plunging into a recession. The idea that the Fed would aggressively lower interest rates will be a sign of economic problems. It will not be a solution to financial markets. And in this environment, you have a lot of investors jockeying to try to figure out what to do. We've seen relatively strong demand for gold in most parts of the world and in most segments of the, the, the gold investment community. 
including small investors outside of the United States and around the world, and larger investors. But we've also seen investors taking profits in the higher prices. And you've seen similar patterns in, in, in silver. So you have a lot of uncertainty, you have a lot of volatility, you're moving into a seasonal week period, June, July, August. Um, prices could be um, flat to lower. Our expectation has been that a base for gold might be $2,285 uh, over the next several months, and that we would expect prices to rise later in the year after August. And that still is the case. In the meantime, unless you're really facile as a short-term trader, I mean, it's great to have gold as a long-term investment, but I wouldn't try to trade these ranges unless you're really good at it with a lot of experience. Gold, there you have it. Similar, very similar, but showing greater downside propensity. That's not surprising. Again, it's a two-way market. You've seen a lot of investors, especially in the United States, buying silver, but you've also seen a lot of investors selling silver. These are investors who bought in the, in the conspiracy garbage period 2021 with Wall Street silver and, and oh, we're going to squeeze the market and COMEX is going to run dry and the price spiked up to $30, $31 an ounce. And a lot of people believed the hoo-ha that it was going to go to 50 or 75 or 750, and it didn't. And some of those investors are selling now to recoup their initial investment. So you're seeing the two-way market there, and you're seeing a lot of uh, reselling, which is precluding wholesalers and retailers buying new coins from the Royal Canadian Mint, the U.S. Mint, and other, other silver bullion coin uh, producers. So again, some downside proclivity. How low it goes, it's hard to say. Is it 28, 26? 26 looks like a good number, but let's be honest. The price was 22 to $24 in the first two months of this year. The probability, the possibility, the odds that the price could fall as low as $22 is a lot greater than silver bulls would, would like to admit. I don't think it's going to fall that far. We actually think that the base might be around $26 over the next few months. But the, the, the silver market is very volatile and it's hard to say. Now, some of the factors that we've seen this week, U.S. CPI, it continues its slow descent, both on a headline basis and in terms of all um, core inflation, which excludes energy and uh, food. We're seeing continued declines. They're slow. Uh, inflation rates are still far higher than um, the Fed's target range. It's going to be a long time before we see those uh, figures, uh, two, two and a half percent, but it is moving that way. Most of the upward inflationary pressure that you're seeing at the consumer level right now is in non-food and energy services, especially transportation services right now, but also medical services to some extent, and housing. Those are the places where you're seeing upward pressures on prices. Other good uh, things, non-food and energy uh, goods, uh, you know, cars, new cars, used cars, clothing, um, sundries, they have been seeing modest declines in prices as demand from consumers cools in part because of the increases in the prices that um, over the last two years, two and three years, 21, 22, 23. So we're seeing some cooling of inflation, but it's still relatively high and it doesn't necessarily say that the Fed is going to let lower its guard. In terms of producer price index, it's a very similar story. We're seeing stronger upward price pressures in the services area rather than the goods, and that then reflect and gets reflected in consumer prices later on. And again, transportation uh, services are is one of the places where we're seeing a lot of uh, price pressure. These are two paragraphs from the 
Federal Reserve Board's FOMC statement yesterday. And I put them up here. You can read them at your leisure. I put them up here because people often ask us, well, you know, why don't you guys have a better track record than most other people who pontificate about where the gold and silver prices and other commodities and markets are going? And one of the points that we make is we read the source documents. So when the CPI comes out or the F, uh, PPI comes out or employment statements or GDP or the Fed's FOMC statement, we go first to the source and we read that. We don't necessarily rely on the interpretations of second parties and third parties. We tend to look at the actual data and, hey, what did the Fed actually write? The Fed actually wrote here that they're keeping uh, interest rates unchanged, that there are signs of strength and uh, in signs of lower inflation in the economy, and they're going to look at a wide range of data and statistics coming in to see how the economy evolves moving forward. Right now, they're sort of seeing the risks balanced. They're seeing they, they have been a little bit concerned about the persistence of inflation, especially in certain sectors like housing and transportation. Uh, but they're also starting to see signs that maybe that's going to improve. And overall, inflation is decreasing a little bit. That suggests that they could ease up on, infla uh, on interest rates. But as I've said repeatedly, um, the Fed's probably not going to lower interest rates because of lower inflation. It will only lower interest rates when it sees a weaker economy. And you can see here the last sentence, uh, uh, the, la the, uh, the first paragraph. The, the Fed talks about how it is, does not expect it to be appropriate to reduce interest rates until it sees inflation moving substantially toward its 2% target. And if you don't expect inflation to move substantially, sustainably toward that 2% target, you don't necessarily think that you're going to lower interest rates because of lower inflation. They go on and talk about how uh, they don't also see uh, reasons to increase interest rates at this point and they will continue to monitor a wide range of data to sort of see where the economy is going as to ascertain when they may modify their interest rate policies upward or downward. They don't think there is much call for upward in moves in interest rates at this point, uh, but they maintain the right to increase interest rates should inflation uh, worsen uh, and, and reverse recent trends. Um, so again, we're all looking to see where the economy goes. The economy is facing some headwinds in the demand uh, and supply of services. Uh, the demand and supply for goods actually is relatively better. Fiscal constraints uh, continue to hamper overall economic activity and could grow worse over the next, not just a few months, but the next couple of years. Uh, and that's a issue that everybody ought to be paying attention to is the, f the potential for fiscal constraints continuing to, to uh, slow growth. So we're in the summer period. We expect interest, uh, gold and silver prices to be, remain volatile in a sideward pattern with a downward slant. Gold could drop below $2,300 uh, $2, briefly um, silver could fall even further in percentage terms, but then beyond August, we're looking at higher prices once again. That's all I have for now. Uh, we did release a market commentary on Chinese silver pricing because there seems to be some a fair bit of confusion as to why silver prices are what they are in China. We will be doing part two of, of that market commentary, which will go into greater details in the fundamentals of the Chinese silver market later this month or early in July. We have an open forum for clients on June 27th. That's an online thing. If you're a client of CPM Group, if you subscribe to some of our services, 
you may send in sentences, uh, questions ahead of time, or you may ask questions during this open forum online. Um, and we don't have any you know, formal presentation. We're just there to address issues that our clients want us to address that we haven't maybe addressed either privately or through open channels such as these videos. And then on July 16th, we'll launch our Platinum Group Metals Yearbook and have an online briefing. That's all I have for now. Have a good weekend. Take care of yourself and those around you. Try to do something good for the world. Read a good book. Read some really good source material online. Don't listen to what the self-appointed pundits are saying. Listen to the data. Look at the data. Understand the data. Maybe go to the library and check out a basic economics book or two. Um, and we'll talk to you next week.